Hello, I'm Mabel Jung. Welcome to the World Healthcare Congress Interview Zone. I'm joined here now by one of the keynote speakers, Brad Wilson, president of Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. Brad, so great to see you. Oh, well, thank you for the opportunity. It's good well, to be here. Well, it certainly is a very exciting time. Are you encouraged by all of the collaborative discussions we're hearing, not just outside of the Congress, but here now? Well, you can certainly feel it here. Uh, and I was here last year, and there's a noticeable change. Uh, lots of interest in new and innovative ways to uh, positively impact our health care system. And uh, not only just in North Carolina, where we have enjoyed a very collaborative relationship with our provider partners for a number of years, but it seems to me that it's truly spreading across the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, you certainly heard that in our panel discussion uh, today. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we've seen insurers very suspicious or actually not not a, in a very friendly working mode with most hospitals and and uh, payers and payees but that's changing well absolutely and and it must change uh, and that model didn't uh, brought us to where we are today so we should look and carefully understand the lessons of history that we have to change our leadership models our behavior our relationships with each other and and that is in fact happening uh, we have a number of examples across our state in North Carolina uh, where but for collaboration and innovation and visionary leadership, they simply would not have uh, been able to come uh, into existence. So I'm, I'm excited about the future. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of challenges, but in every challenge is an opportunity. And uh, coming to a conference like this where you can kind of feel the spirit mm -hmm. and you always learn something when you come, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, well worth doing. Now, what would you say is one of the biggest hurdles that remains uh, as we go forward in the reform of our health care system? Well, there are a number of things, but one, one of the things that uh, I have a little anxiety about is, are, are we moving fast enough? Do we have a sufficient sense of urgency around solving as many problems as we can uh, quick enough to make a big difference in the quality cost equation that we're all uh, focused on? Uh, secondly, quite frankly, I think there's a lot of anxiety about uh, whether or not the exchange and exchanges uh, will work. It, uh, we certainly hope so. We know that everybody is working hard to make that happen. But on October the 1st and after, uh, we'll find out. And if the exchanges fail us, uh, then there will be uh, some, uh, I think, uh, a reaction to that that will not necessarily be productive as we try to figure out this new uh, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's up to us. Uh, we are the leaders, uh, and we've got to engage and bring our best thinking uh, to the forefront. And back to the exchanges for a moment. How is your team involved with that? That deadline is looming. October 1st is what you said. Uh, do you, can you give any personal um, anecdote about what's happening in your offices? Well, we're, we're going to be ready. Uh, our part of the equation, uh, we and will be... What's ready? Okay, we're ready. We'll be ready to plug in to whatever it is that we can plug into, and I mean that metaphorically, uh, so that we can offer our products uh, on the exchange uh, in North Carolina. Now, our state just recently made the decision to default to the federal exchange, so there will not be a state exchange being built. And so we are going to be at the mercy of whatever is available coming out of Washington. Uh, so we're cheering them on uh, robustly uh, that they can get it ready uh, for October 1 open enrollment. Yes. That's why that October date is yes. so important. Okay. And in your discussions with uh, the federal government, uh, have they given any sort of hint as to what it's going to look like? Well, uh, no, the, not so much as how it's going to look like. We, we do uh, get the regular message that it will be ready. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's still lots of work that has to be done, and so we're optimistic that the, that the messaging and the result will, will be the same. Have your offices have t had to put any other additional technologies in place to meet what the federal guidelines uh, oh, will ab like? Absolutely. I, I, I can't, I'm, my guess is, is that virtually every insurer has had to do some customization, some uh, acquisition of new technologies in order to be ready to uh, again, plug into and react and respond to that uh, universal exchange environment. Uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association has been extraordinarily helpful in making sure that all of the blues is getting the best and, and latest information in that regard. Uh, so all you can do is take care of that which you're in, uh, responsible for, and that's what we're doing in North Carolina. 
What about customers, Brad? Uh, what can they look forward to? It should be, well, everyone's hoping for ease of navigation, but pricing, what could they, what could employers be looking at when the, when these come up online? Well, this is a very important year, and, and if we're talking about the exchange environment, now that is the mechanism by which the federal subsidies will be calculated and deployed against whatever the premium price point is for the products that's offered on the exchange. So for those customers that want to access their uh, the purchase decision through that through that means, they will avail themselves of the federal subsidy to be applied against uh, the, the premium. Uh, those who choose not to do so, they will continue to buy their insurance in their traditional way. Uh, and let's remind ourselves now, small group and individual uh, products are what, be, what will be available on the exchange come October 1. Your, your classic group uh, products will still be through the employer and in the employer setting. There's a lot of pressure on premiums and I think uh, uh, the uh, accurate assessment is is that you're going to see uh, the filings that will be coming throughout the year from health insurers will be higher than what you've seen in years past and there's lots of reasons for that. Okay, just initially or as we work through the system and they'll come down again? Well, certainly, do certainly initially, but as we, over time, what would one would hope is we, as we get the answers to a, lots of the, a lot of the uncertainty that is inherent anytime you do anything new, mm -hmm. uh, that, it will, that it will cause a reevaluation of the premium price point, and we all hope that premiums will either level off or, or go down. Uh, but that's, that remains to be seen, and I think that's a couple, three years out. Okay. Uh, I mean, because uh, if you just think about North Carolina, for example, we're going to have approximately two million new people entering the system, uh, either through Medicaid uh, possibilities or uh, uh, through the, the coverage that the uh, exchange will bring uh, them to through the application of the federal subsidy. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what their health circumstance mm -hmm. is. So there's lots to learn. But I want to I make sure I leave you with this point. Uh, there's cause for optimism. This is a time of change and we know that we're on an unsustainable path as a country and and like we've always done, we're going to rally around this, we're going to figure out how to do it. Uh, the ACA is not perfect, uh, but like any other comprehensive piece of legislation that we've ever enacted, I hope we can come together and improve on it and make sure that we're focused on higher quality and lower cost. That's the definition of success. Okay, Brad, well, thank you for your time thank today. You. We appreciate you watching sure, us. Sure, thank through you for that. the opportunity. I'm Mabel Zhang. Thanks so much for watching.